Good evening, Booktube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video. It's been a couple of days. Hope you're all doing well out there in the world. Here in West Michigan, it is March the 26th. It is a Monday night. It is 8.42 at night. Thought I'd make a video. Uh, I mentioned that I would show in my next video the uh, books I bought, well, purchased at the library used bookstore, the book nook, and what I got at thrift stores. The problem is, is that there's too many. I don't want to have a super long video tonight and since my wife is working the next two nights I thought what I would do is show some of the books tonight that I got at the book nook and got I got at local thrift stores to add to our library I don't consider these book hauls I consider these additions to our library my wife and I are readers uh, we enjoy books and uh, since we are not rich, we can find what we want to read at thrift stores or used book sales or at the library used bookstore. I've had no problem over the years finding plenty to read and not having to go to a retail bookstore like Barnes & Noble and buy books. Now I do buy books from Amazon but I usually I buy uh, Christian books or used books or books that are pre-sale, pre-order and that have 25-20% off the retail price. Uh, I do pre-order a lot of books because, and but then I can always cancel the order if I want to. So first of all, uh, as far as my diary today, like I said, it was March the 26th. I ended on page 232. I didn't even write it down. 232 that I have written thus far in the year 2018. Tomorrow is March the 27th, which is a Tuesday. Tomorrow I'm supposed to get a book in the mail. I'm supposed to get a CD in the mail, I think. And some headphones for my portable CD player. Uh, I started walking uh, last couple of weeks. I take a walk every day because I realize that I have to start moving my body. And so I'm building up endurance. I, every week I go, I walk longer and longer, and I hope to, by the end of April, be walking at least two hours a day. Right now I walk around an hour a day, and I want to get up to two hours by the end of April. So I got up, uh, I ha I've had a portable CD player for 20 years, and uh, I needed a new lightweight headphones so I get those in the mail tomorrow from Amazon I got a book getting in the mail tomorrow too which I'll show in an upcoming video so today is a Monday and I volunteer at the book nook on Mondays and these are the books I got at the book nook today for my free book I got this biography, but it's called, uh, it's a biography by Duvan. His name was uh, uh, The Story of Lord Duvan of Melbank. Uh, he was a uh, it says this biography tells us how the young Duvan was motivated from the beginning by the thrill of discovery, how he has sent it. See, it says, Duvan, a life in art, 
by Muriel Muriel Sigris Sigris. And so it says here, Sigurus tells us how the young Dubin was motivated from the beginning by the thrill of discovery, how he ascended at 29 to head of the business, how he moved away from the firm's emphasis on tapestries and Chinese porcelain toward the more speculative, more lucrative, more exciting business of dealing with old and old masters. We see a demand for these paintings growing in America fueled by the new quillionaires just at the moment when British aristocrats with great art collections were losing their fortunes, and how Dubin's whole career was based on the simple observation, Europe has the art, America the money. And so what this guy does, he was selling uh, art to the wealthy people in America. And he lived around the turn of the century, I believe. I think he was born in, let me see here. I think he lived between the years. It must have been around the turn of the century. Let's see if I see a date here. I don't see any dates, but no, 1913 to 1939. So I got that. I have two other biographies by Muriel Segres. I have this one by her somewhere for me, a biography of Richard Rogers. Uh, And then I have a biography that she wrote, Frank Lloyd Wright, a biography by Muriel Seacrest. And I also got at the book nook today, this little paperback for a dollar. This is by Malcolm Cowley. And I worked at the Writer's Trade Chapters of Literary History from 1918 to 1978. I have all... Oh, I have many books by him. Uh, he wrote The Second Flowering, Works and Days of the Lost Generation. He wrote uh, Exile's Return, Literary Odyssey of the 1920s. I have The Dream of the Golden Mountains, Remembering the 1930s. Uh, I have his letters, his memoirs, le letters by Malcolm Colley, he's a very famous literary historian. And then I got this book for a dollar at the book nook today, American Aristocrat, the biography of the ambassador David K. F. Bruce by Nelson D. Lankford. He was uh, born into the Virginia gentry. David K. E. Bruce was, in the words of his brother-in-law, Paul Mellon, the very epitome of the Greek Aristos, handsome, brilliant, entirely at ease with his own wealth and the fabulous Mellon riches. He was the perfect deltitante, but as he matured and the war were too loomed, he devoted himself to public service and to turning American foreign policy from isolation, isolation, Laches. Isolationism to isolationism to world leadership and went on to become ambassador to three crucial countries and advisor and competent to every president from Harry Truman to Gerald Ford. So I got that. And then last Friday I volunteered at the book nook and I got Neil Stevenson, who writes science fiction. This is Steve, Steve, Stephen Eves, a novel. I collect him. Uh, I have several novels by him. And then I bought The Brotherhood of the Bomb, The Tangled Lives and Loyalties of Robert Offenheimer, 
Ernest Lawrence and Edward Teller by Greg Harkin. Brotherhood of the Bomb. This is about the making of the atomic bomb during the Second World War and all the intrigue that went on in that. And then I got from my free book by Ophelia Field, Sarah Churchill, the Duchess of Marlborough, the Queen's favorite. She was the great grandmother of Winston Churchill. I like I like British biographies, uh, and this is what I got for for volunteering. So those are the books I got: the Book Nook, and the rest of the books I got at thrift stores. Uh, so I won't, I'll show those tomorrow, but I've been reading in the mornings, uh, The Reality of God and Historical Method, Apocalyptic Theology and a Conversation with N.T. Wright by Samuel V. Adams, and I've been reading The Sermon on the Mount and Human Flourishing, a Theological Commentary by Jonathan D. Pennington. So that's why I've been reading the morning for devotions, uh, Today, I didn't really read anything. I mean, I I went to the book nook. I came home. I came home, had lunch. Carol just got home from going to the doctors for her yearly physical. And going to the grocery store. We ate lunch, and then I left to go for a walk, and then I went to thrift stores. Well, maybe I'll show those books. I did go to thrift stores, just one thrift store before I came before I came home from the my walk, and I found I found this book at a, just before I came home from the my walk this afternoon. It's called The Outermost House by Henry Beston. A modern classic about a year of life on the great beach of Cape Cod. This was published in first, and I think it was published, first published in 1928. And then I found at the local thrift store, The Brethren Inside the Supreme Court by Bob Woodward. Uh, I started reading this, this uh, the Supreme Court was dealing with in uh, the 1970s with des desegregation and busing and the whole thing going to the Supreme Court. And I found uh, a Hunter S. Thompson. Now, every time I see a Hunter S. Thompson book, I just buy it. I have a whole stack of his, his writings, biographies. But I just collect them. Uh, so I, I, I have this one, but it was only 25 cents. Generation of Swine, Gonzo Papers, Volume 2, Tales of Shame and Degradation in the, degradation in, the night, in the 80s by Hunter S. Thompson. And I bought this Amperisms, Ampor, A Person Selection by W.H. Auden. These are like little sayings like uh, nature has a title. The Creation Was an Act of Mercy by Blake. Uh, what else here? Uh, Voltaire, Man, Men Argue, Nature Acts. Uh, Montaigne, There is nothing useless in nature, but even uselessness itself. Uh, things like that. It was only 25 cents. And then I found this book at the thrift store, La Lakota Woman by Mary Crow Dog. This is an autobiography uh, with Richard Eredus. Dos. And I, I was reading here, this uh, took takes place during the American, uh, the Indian American movement back in the late 60s and 70s, uh, which I am really interested in. 
wounded knee and the whole the Indian movement, Indian rights, American natives, Indians. So I got that. I I have another book by this fellow. This one here, I've shown this. I've had this book since 1972. It was given to me by some friends when I lived out in California for my birthday in 1972. Uh, Lame Deer, Seeker of Visions, The Life of a Sioux Medicine Man by John Fire, Lame Deer, and Richard Erdus. So now I have two books by him. So, yeah, I can count on my ten fingers the people who have given me books in my life. Uh, and so I always treasure those books that are given to me by people over the years, family members, friends. Carol has given me so many books and some other people have given me books over the years. And so I've kept this one. I don't think I have any other book except my Bibles that my grandfather gave me as gifts. Uh, I do have a hymn, a hymnal, the Trinity hymnal that a girlfriend gave me almost 43 years ago. I still have that. And I have some Bibles another girlfriend gave me downstairs. The Knaves Topical Bible that I've kept over these years. I do have some books by C.S. Lewis that a, a, a youth minister gave me. Oh, 45, 45 years ago I have those. So you should always treasure those books that are given to you as gifts. So that's about it as far as uh, additions to our library. Uh, these are the books I got at thrift stores. I'll show those tomorrow. I got these at thrift stores, these. So I don't want to make this a long video. I don't really have... Um, Someone made a comment they're looking forward to a, a book review. I don't know if I have a book review. Uh, I can't even remember exactly what I read yesterday. Let me see what my diary says. What did I read yesterday? Well, let me see. What have I been reading? Oh, you know, I did that Philosopher's Book Tag. If you guys want me to do the Philosopher Book Tag, I did it. I, I answered the questions. If you want me to do that tomorrow night, instead of showing thrift store books, leave a comment. I also copied off, uh, in, in chronological order, the books that were written by William T. Voldman. I've been reading, rereading the royal family by him. Next month, his, a book of his comes out. It's called um, uh, What's coming out? Imme no Immediate Danger, Volume 1 of the Carbon Ideologies, forthcoming April the 10th, 2018. I get that next month. I have almost all of Goldman's books. But so what did I read yesterday? Let me see. I read Reality of God and Historical Method. That's what I read yesterday. I read Studies in Matthew, uh, Sermon on the Mount, and Human Flourishing. I basically read my Christian's books the last couple of days. So I'll sign off, uh, show you these books. I'll list them in the, the bottom of the video. Hoping you're having a good Monday night. I suppose this is Monday Reads. 
<laughs> Monday reads. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to read tomorrow. I'm not really sure. I know I'm going to be reading in the morning the Sermon on the Mount, Human Flourishing, a Theological Commentary. And I'm not, I got this out last night, and I was just, I'm, this is a reread. I read it last year. I think this came out in 2015. So this is a reread. Uh, I was just rereading it just for fun. The reality of God and historical method, apocalyptic theology and the conversation with N.T. Wright. I think I got this book out because I did that philosophy book tag and it got me thinking about philosophy and that's why I got this out. So I'll sign off. I hope you will have a good week. They had a good weekend. Thank you for the new subscribers. And until next time, bye.